it's a war it's a war so you have to fight it out you have to conquer tuberculosis from very beginning i still remember telling many people that i wanted to be a doctor and believe me now i'm very thankful for it anjali kitni umar hai tumhari 16 16 saal ki tb or tuberculosis because it's an infectious disease it spreads in the community by air so if you stop the patient from transmission of the disease you are doing benefit to the society it gives you a satisfaction which no other specialty or no other profession will give you it's the best service you can do to a mankind you had innumerable problem with the patient of tuberculosis tb is a social disease I have seen ladies being thrown out of their houses, children and senior people being discriminated for having TB, families not being in contact because of tuberculosis. Being a chronic disease with long treatment, you get delusion, you get depressed. There are cases where I have seen that patients have committed suicide. That was how much they dreaded tuberculosis. This is the dot center. These are the first line drugs. This is completely six months of treatment. I don't know if you've ever had to take a course of antibiotics, but I know a lot of people that won't even finish a 10-day course of antibiotics, let alone a 180-day course of antibiotics. People stop because they start to feel better after a month because the drugs do work. So they stop coughing, they stop taking the drugs, and the germs that survive are the ones that are most resistant to those drugs. Now we only have about five frontline drugs for the fighting against tuberculosis. When those drugs stop becoming effective, we're starting to get multi-drug and extensively drug-resistant TB. If you're unfortunate enough to have drug-resistant TB, you can count on being on antibiotics for a couple years, and it will take its toll on you. Treating multi-drug-resistant tuberculosis for two years, it's a challenge for any chest physician. The drugs are quite toxic. The patient will have a lot of problems. So MDR TB has been ignored throughout the world, including in India, but this has truly been a global challenge. Currently, uh, around the world, about three or four percent of new TB cases are multi-drug resistant. But the more troubling issue in more recent years has been that even the second-line drugs, which have been used to treat the MDR TB, don't really work. Drug resistance has a particular threat to society, to global society, by virtue of the great difficulty one has in treating these diseases. Extensively drug resistant TB can be up to a thousand times more expensive to treat. The costs of treating those kinds of tuberculosis are so high that in many countries they're just a death sentence. We can treat MDR, but we. We all know that even with the best treatment regimens, you don't have more than 60, 70% of people actually surviving and, and doing well. That's been our experience. It's these very old drugs that we are still actually dreading on to treat the patient. And when they resist them, sometimes we actually reach the end of the road where we don't even have more drugs to give patients. And then we just send them home to die. So I was at home. But I was on a Sunday, I woke up, I switched on the television and it was, there was no sound. And the doctor confirmed that I'm actually permanently deaf, now there's nothing they can do.
She was on an MDR TB regimen, which includes an injection called canamycin. The injection that she'd been receiving, she was actually resistant to. So she'd received this injection, which she didn't need, and gone deaf from it. Christmas of 2011. Just before Christmas, we had to sit with her and say, you know, Pomeza, now we really have used every single option. Even if you're in the US, in the UK, anywhere in the world, there are no other drugs available. No matter how much money you've got, there's nothing we can give you now. So we tailored this regimen with really a last hope, like it was a salvage chance. I really didn't think it would work. She just was like, I want to live and this is my only chance. No matter how small the chance is, I have to keep taking it. And then she eventually, miraculously, I honestly think it's miraculously, her cultures became negative again February last year. If it wasn't for MSF, I don't think I would be here right now. But still, there's this deafness thing that's still holding me back, so it's difficult. When we did say she could go home, the family was still quite scared, so we helped her to build a shack um, in the back garden of a friend of her mum's. So now she lives there with her mum, just the two of them. The rest of the family don't want her at home. I didn't think they expected her to come back. There's a lot of stigma around DRTB in that healthcare workers and many people think that you got it because you were a bad TB patient. You know, you didn't take your TB treatment very well and now you've developed DRTB. And that was the case maybe a decade ago. That's, you know, when it first emerged. Whereas now, because there's so much of it around and it's spread through the air, you know, you just sit next to somebody in a taxi, windows closed, they have XDRTB, they cough it in into the air, you breathe it in and you get it. Pumeza, she was this young, HIV negative, 19 year old South African going to college, like with all the promise in the world and got pre-XDRTB for the first time ever, never having had TB before. I've seen um, many, especially at Brooklyn, I've seen many patients dying because now I was giving another, uh, I got seven chance. How many chances did I get? Seven chance. To live. I don't know, I had hope. I'm willing to speak out from a person so that it could help other person out there to not give up hope. MDR tuberculosis. India has the highest number of cases in the world. We should be able to prevent MDR tuberculosis at any cost. BCG is part of our national immunization program. BCG still has some protection against severe forms of TB in young children. But certainly for later on in life, we know that BCG does not protect adults. Every clinician is aware of the limitation of BCG and the need for a newer vaccine. Thank you for everyone. You. Preventing the scourge of tuberculosis, we do need a vaccine. That's the gravest need for tuberculosis. pneumonia <laughs> The nurses and the doctors that show up every single day in these TB hospitals without any protection, they're real heroes for doing that. But this is a very huge risk. It's a big risk when they're working with tuberculosis and worse if they're working with MDR. Even in patients that did not suspect of having tuberculosis, they could be exposed. So ideally, if there's a vaccine, it's gonna protect you in all angles, uh, in all types of patients. Trying to stay one step ahead of tuberculosis is going to be hard. We are in an arms race with the evolution of these pathogens. We grossly underestimated the adaptive ability of microbes. The bugs always outpace the development of antibiotics, and I think we've seen that across all infectious diseases. So prevention would be a much better option. There has been a notion that if we just treat people better, we'll somehow treat our way out of this epidemic. We, we somehow need to counter the sense of all we have to do is more dots. <coughs> For instance, in a province like my own, 
We really have actually been trying to do DOTS very well indeed. The clinic that I work in wins prizes every year, finding people for putting them onto treatment, making sure they finish their treatment, and yet we have seen a year-on-year -year increase in tuberculosis. I think we have to go back and say, okay, if that's not enough, then what else needs to be done? We need to fight this war on several fronts. The risk of uh, not investing in TB vaccine research is that we may see more and more drug-resistant TB emerging, which is going to outstrip the uh, development of new drugs. It would be extremely foolish for us to ignore MDR-TB at this point. With populations that are growing, people living in close proximity, we would have an absolute nightmare on our hands. So tomorrow, if your steps are not taken, to control or to total eliminate this severe form of tuberculosis, and then it will be uncontrollable. Don't think that it's happening on the other side of the globe. It is at your very doorstep. But with the advent of vaccine, we see near future tuberculosis totally vanishing from this planet.